Safety first. Hello and welcome back to the channel. This right here is my Evil Dead Home Light Super XL. This sweet baby was made in Charlotte, North Carolina, or as no local ever would say, North Kakalaki. <laughs> um, I tore this down about three years ago. It's one of the first saws that I actually really opened up and actually started working on, and I had no clue what I was doing. But I did know enough to know that um, I wanted more compression and I shouldn't screw around with the ports, the port timing, because I might really mess it up. Because, like I said, I didn't know what I was doing and I didn't know how to properly time the saw. So the only thing that this thing has had truly done to it is it's had a, just a mild touch of flow porting on the intake and crankcase. Um, just so that it would flow a little bit better and a little bit on the exhaust as well. But I did not change any timing numbers aside from I did remove the base gasket. Now these things have a weird base gasket and intake gasket that is combined. And so what I did is I just cut the base ca gasket portion away and sealed it up. And I've never been able to get it run right, to run right with me. Uh, it ran great before I tore it down. Uh, whenever I put it back together though, it would run for a minute and then it would shut off. And uh, I sent it to Dan at Kane's Custom Garage and he went through it, got it to run. I still think that I might have an air leak though, which means I shouldn't be doing what I'm about to do. <laughs> but uh, to hell with it. <laughs> I'm just going to send it. I've got a 30 inch bar on it. It is a hard tip bar and it's a brand new Oregon chain, but it is an old Oregon chain. It's an old one. And so I don't know what this is going to do. I might burn up the clutch. I might burn up the saw. I'm going to try not to burn up the saw, uh, but we're going to see if it'll cut this big uh, chunk of oak that I have sitting here and waiting. So. Without further ado, let's fire this puppy up and see what she's got. She's nose heavy. <laughs> what Dan found was that uh, the carburetor on it was having some real problems with the seat and stuff like that. And uh, let's see how she does. Oh, come on.
<laughs> so I don't think it has an air leak. Um, I think that uh, what's going on, I can't get, so every time I need to tune it, so this happened to me up at the house as well. Uh, I was trying to tune it in and everything, and you saw me keep putting my hand around here. I was wanting to feel how hot it was getting, and it was, it was fine, it really was. So I don't think that it has an air leak. What I think is going on now, what it seems like to me, is maybe on this carburetor, the, uh, the throttle, uh, the idle adjustment where you're turning this big screw in and you're, uh, it's opening up your throttle, your actual throttle. I don't think I can get that in far enough. And what that's causing, the saw wants to idle at a, it wants a higher idle than what I can give it because whenever I am tuning the saw, every time that I am messing with the low side, I'm actually turning it in. So I am leaning it out. So therefore, if I have to lean it out, then the problem is not that it's got an air leak. Because if it has an air leak, I would have to be giving it more fuel. So I keep having to lean out the low side uh, but every time that I do that, then I'm taking too much away from my high side because see guys, your, uh, if you don't already know this, your low side does still provide fuel flow for the high side as well. So if I have to lean out the low side to get it to idle where I want it to, but then I take away from the high side because that's whenever it starts to bog. You saw me giving it the trigger and it was wanting to bog right off of idle. So I need to fix the idle screw, the idle adjustment screw, and um, get it to where I can turn the idle up by moving the butterfly of the carburetor. That way I can, I can keep the low side where it needs to be, which it wants to be richened, in order for me to not have the throttle bog. So that's what's going on, um, I, I think, anyways. It, before, I couldn't even do this. And I would have never guessed that the carburetor was bad because this thing ran great before I took it apart. So um, anyways, yeah, I mean, it's a tractor. If you want to sit there and wait for it, it'll pull a 30 inch bar. <laughs> I mean, I just have this bar laying around guys because, um, well, I just do. It came with a big old uh, bunch of chains and bars that I got at an estate sale and uh, I've been actually saving this bar for my Poland 5200. Uh, they take the same bar mount. I, I think they do anyways. Um, but uh, whenever I get the Poland 5200 back to running, which, I mean, I got so many projects, you know. I feel bad for the guys that watch the channel because of one particular saw. And then I do a video on it once every six months. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I just got a lot of projects. But this thing right here, I bought it, the, the saw itself, I bought it at an estate sale. And I think I paid 15 bucks for it. So thank goodness for that generational wealth that I've got. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I had the paint uh, and everything. It has been painted... I mean, nothing that I can do will showcase the paint on it. And honestly, in person, it's still not all that good. Uh, it's, it's really not. But what I did was I painted the saw um, a metal flake silver and then I candy red over top of it. And um, I mean, it's pretty cool, but you know, this was, I was just messing around, just playing and um, built this thing. 
So yeah, I definitely don't think that it has an air leak. I think it still needs a little bit more carb work though. Um, but it hopefully is going to be pretty simple stuff. And honestly, the, the only thing that I have this for is so that it can compete on Halloween in my Halloween whack off. So I'll have Ash Williams, if you're familiar with the, um, with the, the, the series, the movies, you know, the saga that is the Evil Dead. Uh, what he originally kills, uh, all of the bad, you know, a bad demon, he originally kills it with a Super XL, uh, which is this. Now, then in part two, in the second one, the chainsaw that he grabs is actually a home light XL, you know, just the little tiny one that was just like a, like an arborist saw for, you know, tree climbers and stuff. And, um, he cuts off his wrist, cuts off his hand, lops it off at the wrist, and he does it with that little saw. And then he fabricates a way to mount that saw to his hand. But this is the original Evil Dead chainsaw model. The Home Light Super XL. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at it and I'll tell you what I found. So first off, no, there's no air leak. Um, that piston looks good, perfectly good. And you can see a little bit of my uh, port work there. All I did really was flow porting. I didn't change no timing numbers or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that all looks good. But whenever I got up here and I put it on the bench, oh, and I did a compression test and I, my compression is at 135. So we're good there. But um, I noticed that fuel was pouring out all over the place. And uh, so it's still going past the seat on this. Uh, so I, I, I'm probably gonna need to get a new carburetor or something. I don't know, I know, I know Dan put this one on he put this one on and um, clearly it's better because it'll actually run now. This is, oh yes. No, yeah. That's what I was talking about. I can't turn that in far enough. Let's see if I can get it with a big screwdriver now. There we go. And it is definitely moving that. So, that that right there might fix it pretty nicely but um it being pushed back has caused so this thing the gas tank gets hot on it like all these old saws gas tank gets hot and i noticed it was pressurizing the tank really bad and that can be causing the issue where it's bleeding the fuel out of the carburetor especially if your seat can't stop it so at this point um and whenever it quit running, turns out, I think it quit running because, because it ran out of gas, I think. Um, but for right now, I'm going to shelf this and uh, hopefully it'll run whenever I need it to. Here soon, actually, probably in the month of September is whenever I'll start doing the Halloween whack-offs uh, so that I can have them ready to go and all set and uh, release them in the month of October. But... There we go. Fun little saw, you know, and I can't believe it pulled that 30 inch bar. Really, I thought it wouldn't pull it at all. And there were several times there where I was not babying it through the cut. I was pulling. I was pulling on it. But uh, so it did well. It, it, it did well. Uh, but, you know, once I get those Halloween whack offs, this thing will probably just hit the shelf and stay there for forever, you know. I have no need for a saw of this vintage and this power level and stuff like that. But it is cool. All right, see ya. I, I forgot to mention, I did take that fuel cap off. I took that fuel cap off and uh, it did seem like there was a little bit of a clog. Uh, they, they have this set up. Let me show you. So the vent is in the cap itself. They have this little porous uh, uh, brass 
plug, and behind that is a duckbill valve. So I took all that out and cleaned it out, and it seems like it's actually working a little bit better, but honestly, I don't know. Uh, it could just be all the heat is just pressurizing that tank more than it can stand because we're here in Georgia, and it's, I think right now it's like, probably like 88 degrees outside, so that could be causing a problem. But regardless, this thing runs, and uh, uh, I'll be able to accomplish what I need out of it. Thank you very much, Dan, because it wasn't running at all before you got it. Uh, that thing was in bad shape. All right, so yeah, that's good. See ya.